Well, a Pakistani national who was also a longtime aide to the former chairwoman of the Democratic National Committee, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, has been arrested after trying to flee this country. Imran Awan has been charged with felony bank fraud. Awan had been under investigation for months. He was banned from the House computer system in February for posing a security risk. And yet, for some reason, Wasserman Schultz kept him on her payroll until just yesterday. Not only that, but she actively tried to sabotage the investigation into Awan. She threatened Capitol Police after they seized a laptop. What is going on here? Mark Stein has been following this story carefully. He's an author and columnist, and he joins us tonight. What is this about, Mark? Well, it's about everything that uh, the Democrats and the media have spent a month trying to prove that the Russia investigation, so-called, is about. Everything they've looked for and failed to find in the Russia investigation uh, is, in fact, going on under their noses in this particular story. Uh, we have uh, computer interference. We have, as you said, a, uh, a, a powerful political figure attempting to interfere with a federal investigation, as Debbie Wasserman and Schultz did uh, when she threatened the head of the Capitol Police. Uh, we have actual criminal elements. This guy uh, was arrested trying to flee the country. We have interference from foreign politicians. Uh, these guys were given uh, $100,000 by a prominent Iraqi politician. In other words, everything that they have been looking for in the Russia investigation and failed to find <laughs> is actually staring them in the face uh, with, and with this mysterious guy. And that's actually before the more obvious problems with the story, which is how does one guy uh, uh, from uh, from the Pakistan, from Lahore, his wife, their two brothers, and at least one of their sisters-in-law end up providing uh, IT services for dozens of Democrat uh, powerful figures. That in itself is actually pretty unusual. Well, it is. It's it's an odd story from start to finish. And maybe weirdest is even after this guy was under. A public cloud, even after Debbie Wasserman Schultz had threatened, apparently, the uh, Capitol Police looking into it. And this is a news story. He worked for her until yesterday. That's what right. would that? Why would she do that? Well, he, he was arrested at Dallas Airport on Monday night. She uh, terminated his employment, uh, which was, by the way, at the expense of you and I and every other taxpayer, on Tuesday. Most of the other Democrat congressmen for whom this family work, uh, they got rid of uh, this family, uh, both of the wife and the brother-in-law and so on, back at the end of February, beginning of March. Occam's razor would suggest uh, that the reason that uh, she kept him on was that because she was additionally head of the DNC, he had too much on her. Uh, that's the basic explanation. He knew her iPad password, which means, by the way, you no no longer need to worry about whether Vladimir Putin gave all the DNC emails uh, to uh, the WikiLeaks guy at the Colombian embassy or whatever it right. is in London. Never mind that. Uh, the fella arrested at Dulles airport trying to flee back to Lahore actually had Debbie Wasserman Schultz's password and there's so much collusion going on here that Debbie actually colluded with the guy fleeing to Lahore by giving him the password herself. So if uh, you know, if, if in his ever expanding investigation Bob Mueller would like something else to set his 37 Hillary donors to work on, they can wrap this thing up uh, in the next 48 hours because it's all <laughs> staring them in the face. Well, here's the, I, I, we referenced earlier the threats that she made against Capitol Police in this, and that's a pretty strong thing to say about somebody. I, th I think we actually have tape of this, in case anyone doubts it. Here's Debbie Wasserman Schultz. My understanding, the Capitol Police is not able to confiscate members' equipment when the member is not under investigation. I, I think you're violating the rules when you, when you conduct your business that way and should expect that there would be consequences. Ooh. Right. There will be consequences, says the member of Congress, to the person who, in effect, works for her. Yeah, and that's a powerful uh, House committee member threatening law enforcement, saying, if you know what's good for you, uh, you're going to return what she calls my laptop, which is, in effect, a laptop that this guy, the guy who's on, uh, got borrowing money uh, from Iraqi politicians and whatnot, is in the control and uh, under the supervision of uh, the guy who was arrested. And she's threatening. So again, this isn't like Trump saying obliquely, 
to Jim Comey. Uh, can you uh, can you assure me yeah. uh, that my hopes that you I will always have your loyalty will be? It's nothing to do with anything as oblique as hope <laughs> no. and loyalty. She's saying, "Give me this, give me this piece of evidence in a criminal investigation, or you guys are going to get it." And yeah, uh, she's, and she's not a master of the oblique. She's yeah, <laughs> she's no, pretty no. explicit. And by, and, and what's interesting is this guy, yep. his wife, the brothers-in-law, the, the sister, the brothers yep. and the sister-in-law. They've made five million dollars. It's estimated from from fighting because the Democrats, as we know, require highly specialized computer services. Unbelievable. You have to be able to go to Home Depot, gonna... buy the biggest hammer, uh, and that costs money. <laughs> These guys got five million, We're... and they're still borrowing money from Iraqi politicians. We're going to get the details in the hearings. Mark, great to see you tonight. Thanks a lot, Tucker.